Good morning and welcome to Face the Nation. Thank you for joining us this holiday weekend. We begin today with immigration and the win for the Biden administration last week in the Supreme Court, that of the ending of President Trump's Remain in Mexico policy. To discuss that and more, we want to welcome Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas to this broadcast. Mr. Secretary, good morning to you. Happy early 4th of July. Good morning and the same wish uh, to you, Margaret. Thank you. So what happens now that Remain in Mexico is going away? Are you ending this policy immediately? And what happens to those individuals in the encampments waiting right across the border? Margaret, we were very pleased with the Supreme Court's decision. So now, uh, in light of the, um, the favorable Supreme Court ruling, we have to wait for that ruling to reach the district court that issued an injunction preventing us from ending Remain in Mexico. So we have uh, several weeks to go before the district court lifts its injunction. And until then, we are obligated by the district court's ruling to continue to implement the Remain in Mexico program, and we will do so in accordance with law. So those people will still have to wait in the camps on the Mexican side of the border, but what happens to them next? Right now, they do have to remain in Mexico, and then uh, we will uh, actually continue with their immigration enforcement proceedings. Remember, when people are encountered at the border, they are just not merely released into the United States. They are placed in immigration enforcement proceedings. And that is what will occur uh, with these people. Their proceedings will continue in immigration court where they will pursue their claims for asylum. And if those claims are unsuccessful, they will be swiftly removed from the United States. So Reuters is reporting that there are right now thousands of people who departed on Friday and are moving towards the U.S. border. Uh, what do you need right now? Do you need more personnel for Customs and Border Control? Do you need more equipment to tackle these smugglers that are exploiting these people? Margaret, uh, we are working very closely with our partners to the south, with Mexico, um, that breaks up very often uh, these uh, caravans of individuals uh, that seek to take that dangerous journey uh, to reach our border only to be met with the enforcement of our laws. We have said repeatedly and we continue to warn people not to take the dangerous journey. We saw so tragically in San Antonio, Texas, uh, one of the possible tragic results of that dangerous journey and so many people don't even make it that far in the hands of exploitative smugglers. And we continue to enforce immigration law as is our legal responsibility. You are saying right now, what I hear you saying is do not come, but those words are not being heard. People are moving right now. So the efforts to stop the root causes are not stopping them. This horrific trafficking, the worst smuggling tragedy in US history this week with those individuals found dead in that trailer truck. That's not stopping people. Are you predicting that this is only going to get more significant from here, that we're going to go beyond the record surge in migrants? Uh, uh, no, I am I'm not predicting that at all. And, and in fact, in the wake of the San Antonio tragedy and our Homeland Security Investigations uh, is the lead federal agency. Um, investigating uh, what occurred and um, working with the United States Attorney's Office and the prosecution of thus far four individuals who've been charged with that heinous uh, crime. We're working with our partners to the south because this is a regional challenge that requires a regional response. But they got past the US, last the US border spoke. officials. Oh, so we have a multi-layered approach, uh, Margaret. We, of course, have our inspections at the port of entry with our sophisticated non-intrusive technology. We then have checkpoints uh, that are staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Laredo checkpoint in question, 10 to 14,000 vehicles pass through that checkpoint every day. So um, how did this, this smuggler get these alone, people across? 53 people died. These are very sophisticated transnational criminal organizations. Uh, they have evolved over the last 30 years. In the 90s, I prosecuted them, and they were much more rudimentary. Now they are very sophisticated using um, uh, technology, and they're extraordinarily organized transnational uh, criminal enterprises. And we 
um, are much more sophisticated using technology and personnel 24 hours a day. You know, we have saved more than 10,000 individuals this fiscal year alone in more than 400 vehicle inspections. Um, so uh, can a truck get through, uh, through sophisticated means? Sometimes yes, but I have to say we've interdicted more drugs at the ports of entry than ever before. We've rescued more migrants. We're seeing a challenge uh, that is really regional, hemispheric in scope, and we're addressing it accordingly. Mr. Secretary, I also want to ask you here at home about what we've seen in the past 24 hours. There's been this back and forth between state and federal uh, law enforcement regarding security to Supreme Court justices and protests outside their home. Does the threat go beyond picketing? Is it specific and credible? So we um, have seen a heightened threat envir environment over the last several months over a number of different um, volatile uh, issues that galvanize people on different sides uh, of each issue. We in the Department of Homeland Security uh, become involved when there's a connectivity between um, uh, the, the opposition to a particular view or a, an ideology uh, of hate, a false narrative, and violence. It is that connectivity to violence uh, when we engage and we are very mindful that the Supreme Court's uh, decision uh, in um, uh, reversing and overturning Roe versus Wade uh, has um, uh, really uh, heightened the threat environment, and we have deployed resources to ensure the safety and security of the Supreme Court and the justices. We Before I let you go, I do want to ask you about what we saw this weekend up in Boston. A white supremacist group called Patriot Front marched through that city. They recently planned events, a riot in Idaho. You're seeing this far-right group, the Proud Boys, also disrupt events in California. How concerned are you right now about these militias? Margaret, um, I have said, and uh, this has been echoed by the director of the um, FBI, uh, that domestic violent extremism is one of the greatest terrorism-related threats that we face in the homeland today. Individuals um, spurred by ideologies of hate, false narratives, personal grievances, two acts of violence, and it is that violence that we um, uh, respond to and we seek to, of course, uh, prevent. Uh, we are in a heightened threat uh, environment. Mr. Secretary, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Margaret.